All right. This one is hot off the Cup of Linux suggestion box. That's right. If you have requests, you got to go on cupoflinux.com and put those requests in the suggestion box. And um, if I ever need show ideas, that's where I'll look. Now, this is a distribution I haven't looked at in a very long time. And as a matter of fact, the last time I looked at SUSE's KDE desktop, it was using um, KDE4, if I'm not mistaken. So I haven't even had an opportunity to look at their implementation of Plasma until now. Before I go into uh, today's exercise, I'd like to point out that uh, there were a few options I was considering in looking at OpenSUSE once again. Um, they gave me two choices. Either I could use Tumbleweed, which is their rolling release, or I could use Leap, which is their uh, regular release uh, desktop. I opted for Tumbleweed because I happen to like the rolling release model, and they stated that they have this uh, fairly well stable-wise, so... Uh, I wanted to have a look at that. And then, of course, um, I used their smaller image, their uh, USB net install. And I picked their uh, the first choice in the list, which was KDE. So we are, so I just basically installed this um, through the network. And then um, you're going to be exploring this with me for the first time, uh, just as I do. All right, so here's the desktop that we're presented with, uh, starting from the bottom right, the pancake menu, which gives you the option to add all of your widgets and that sort of thing so that you can customize this. A bunch of tools are thrown in here so that you can um, pretty much uh, turn your uh, panel into a do-it-all kind of thing. You can have your clock, your weather, Dashboard applications, I mean, the sky is the limit. And I mean, pretty much like what I did with my XFCE desktop, my panel, uh, you know, doubles as not only a dock, but it's also uh, my widget panel, too, because it's got my weather, my CPU, my network, interface, all that stuff, all rolled into one. Next to the pancake menu, you got your time and a calendar. All right, and then, of course, this little up arrow will show you all your notifications, and you can also configure your volume and your network from right here. Uh, two desktops uh, thrown in uh, next to the uh, start icon. And then, by default, um, this has the standard switcher, but I went ahead and I changed this to uh, the regular menu, but you can right-click and configure this by uh, choosing alternatives. You can go with the default application launcher, which is this. You can try the application dashboard and uh, get something like this if you find something like this to be a little bit more appealing. And my personal favorite is the application menu. This just gives me that air of familiarity uh, that I come to expect when using an operating system. But you have a few choices available to you. Now, this edition of OpenSUSE KDE has quite a bit installed with it. So it gives you a nice little taste of what KDE has to offer. I personally would have liked it better if they had given an option to have a, a minimal install so that maybe uh, it would install a KDE desktop for me, but let me choose what applications I want to install after uh, booting into the OS for the first time. This gives you a number of things I would need to uninstall if I didn't want these items. There's a few board games, this has a card game and a couple logic games. Of course, K-Mines is one of my favorite games, and I play this all the time, especially if I'm waiting on something to process. I'll open up K-Mines and, you know, play that game, you know, while I'm waiting and that sort of thing. A few little graphics tools thrown in. Nothing fancy. You also get a handful of internet tools, uh, namely uh, Firefox, and then, of course, the KDE mail client called K-Mail. A few other little things thrown in here. Uh, VLC, which will pretty much chop up any video 
um, that you need. Uh, it has most of the codecs for playing most media formats. Uh, you get the full LibreOffice suite and a few KDE applications thrown in here as well. All right, uh, you've got um, system settings. We'll take a look at this real quick, and then we'll go into the yet another setup tool. From here, you can manage your themes now. In previous releases of OpenSUSE and their KDE, they had a bunch of really cool uh, themes thrown in there. It does not look like they have that anymore. That's okay, though. At least they do have a nice breeze dark theme. You know, I prefer the darker theme myself. Um, number of desktop themes, a few cursor themes, and you can manage your splash screen options. And I happened to like <laughs> the light bulb, uh, theme that they have that is, uh, currently with this. I thought that was really cute when it booted for the first time. I was like, yeah, not bad. <laughs> All right, and everything you need to manage this to manage this system and make it your own is all in here. But really, the meat and potatoes of this is this does have um, a really neat uh, setup tool called Yast, and here you can pretty much manage everything. Now, uh, I've got to say, uh, I like. How this is all laid out and pretty much you've got a control center right here where you can manage uh, all of your uh, software okay this uses the red hat package management or rpm packages so pretty much any uh, rpm package you find uh, for red hat or fedora would theoretically run on the system Naturally, of course, you don't want to blindly download RPM packages off the internet. You're better off getting them uh, from the package manager. But you basically uh, type in what you want, do a search for it. Helps if I spell that correctly, and it should have the package that you want uh, ready to install for you. All right, and they have a number of groups to help you find the applications. I like this layout and design. This is good for those of you coming over from the Debian or Ubuntu side of things. You want a package manager uh, that has a similar look and feel to Synaptic. Uh, this, this works out fairly well, and it doesn't have much of a learning curve to uh, pick this one up. So not bad there. Um, but at any rate, uh, a bunch of tools are thrown in here. You can uh, verify CD and DVD media integrity um, you can uh, run your updates here now I just did a fresh installation and I would imagine it would already give me a notifications uh, that there were updates but in this case it isn't because as stated I use their uh, I used their uh, small image and booted into that and just installed the system that way and so I believe I have everything completely uh, cutting edge already installed and ready to go you can manage your hardware here other system settings network services and security such as your firewall everything is all loaded into this one convenient user interface so well worth your time to check that out a few additional utilities are included uh, such as your archivers your uh, packet your uh, file managers and that sort of thing are thrown in here and it looks like they got a quick launch to super user mode if you need it okay a few other utilities such as a calculator you know um spreadsheets notes that sort of thing so this makes it a nice complete operating system let's uh, click on help and see what we get here okay it looks like we've got the kde help center right here so if you don't understand something you can pretty much uh, search through things here and see if you can find answers otherwise you can log into uh, OpenSUSE's website and get support and open up Firefox and see where that takes us see if they even set it up that way to where it takes you directly to their website and of course it does excellent so it takes you directly to uh, OpenSUSE's search and I gotta like that. It looks kind of cool. So uh, it looks like this is a customized search that they have. And so let's uh, just for laughs and giggles do a search for Broadcom. And um, do 
just out of curiosity to see if this, um, well, it's not, uh, pulling anything from, okay, yes, it does have OpenSUSE, a uh, wireless driver installation, so it did come up in the search results there. So, uh, I know a lot of distributions use, uh, customized searches. I know I use them on, uh, my own distribution with, uh, MCOL, and we have a customized search, so, uh, that works, and it helps people to find the information they're looking for. Excellent. So, looking good. And you'll notice, too, uh, this is uh, performing quite well. So, you know, the KDE developers have done a really great job at, um, you know, really streamlining this. And just out of curiosity, why don't I open up um, the terminal... And um, let's see how much memory this is using up. And I realize I've been bouncing around quite a bit, opening and closing applications. All right, but it's telling me that it's only using 587 megs of RAM. That's pretty darn good, considering I've been bouncing around, opening and closing applications, so it looks like it's not keeping stuff, you know, um, you know, uh, hooked into memory and that sort of thing, you know, um... This is pretty good stuff indeed, and I, I imagine this would probably be even lower if I had run this command upon initial boot. So, um, this certainly isn't a memory hog. I like what I see here. If you think this is something that you would like to try out, I will have a link in the description where you can uh, download Tumbleweed, or if you prefer, you can have Leap. And uh, download this and try it out yourself. And as stated, I've used the uh, smaller uh, net install image rather than installing their uh, 4.6 gig ISO. And I, f I thought the uh, installation process was straightforward and easy, so I didn't see any point in actually uh, demonstrating that in today's exercise. Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing next on Cup of Linux, but I'm sure I'll have something equally exciting. So until next time, peace out. Mm -hmm.